So I've already done the research for you and talked to actual chartered accountants working in these countries. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the best countries to work for for a high paying finance job as a chartered accountant in your first five to seven years after qualifying. So as mentioned, the salaries in this video will not be based off just one article I've read or a discussion I had with just one professional who works in that region, but rather it's going to be based off a range of sources and talking to a range of professionals who worked in those regions as chartered accountants and also job offers that I've received for chartered accountancy roles. So I can definitely vouch for the salaries that I'll be discussing in this video. Now to make comparisons easier, I'm going to be giving you the salaries in US dollars and also I've decided to leave arguably the most popular high income location for chartered accountants till the end of this video and that's only because there's a few things I want to clarify about that location which you might or might not be aware of so do stick around till the end. But I'm going to be starting with the location I'm most familiar with and that is the UK. Now when you join as a trainee, especially at a big four firm, you can expect to start on the graduate program and you won't really be earning a lot of money at this stage of your career. Typically you'll be on around thirty-three dollars to $45,000 in your first three years and after you pass each exam, you'll move up that range. There are some bonuses, but I won't be focusing on them as it doesn't make a large component of your salary at this stage of your career. The jump in your salary will come after you've qualified and it's at this point you'll start to be earning around $55,000. Typically, there'll be a lot of churn at accounting firms once people have qualified as you can easily move into industry for quite a lot more salary. Now, if you move into industry in areas such as financial planning and analysis or product control, your starting salary should be at a minimum in the seventy to seventy-five thousand dollar range, and it's at here that your bonuses will start to become important. When moving, make sure you understand the typical bonuses given out for these roles. Now, obviously, accounting roles in any industry aren't going to be a big part of the revenue generation but the bonuses given out are still pretty decent. I remember when I was working in banking and finance roles, the bonuses were easily at a very minimum 15% of your salary every year. By the end of seven years, a chartered accountant in the UK should be aiming for a salary of around eighty dollars to $95,000. The next country I'm going to cover is America and primarily when I'm talking about America, the main city will be New York, but I'm going to try and average it out for other cities as well. Now, one thing to know is to be a chartered accountant in America, there are very few reciprocal arrangements between other accounting bodies and the American CPA. And so you probably have to do the CPA qualification to be officially recognized as a chartered accountant in America. But if we start again with the big four starting salaries, you can expect to be around forty-five dollars to $60,000 at the start of your career and you can immediately see that's quite a bit more starting salary compared to the UK. Once qualified as a CPA, your salary will jump up to the range of sixty-five to eighty-five thousand dollars and again, it's here you'll have to make the decision of whether you want to stay in practice or move into industry. Now, if you stay in practice and become a manager, you'll be on around one hundred and one hundred and ten thousand dollars but even at this level the bonuses don't really factor a large component of your salary if you're working in practice. Now moving north from America let's look at how high the salaries of chartered accountants are in Canada. Now after qualification the salary will on average be seventy seven thousand dollars which you might notice is a lot lower than the UK and the US. Even the top twenty five percent of CAs in Canada don't reach comparable level to the US counterparts as on average they'll be earning around ninety to ninety five thousand dollars. To be earning over one hundred thousand dollars in Canada you really do have to be a very senior position as opposed to say just a manager in the US. Now back into Europe I'm going to be looking at Ireland. Now Ireland is a very interesting country as there's a lot of tech and financial institutions based there, mostly due to the favorable tax laws. Importantly, they're also part of the EU, which means easier access to the European market for these companies. Now, in your first year, you can expect to be earning around $34,000 and the majority of the jobs in Ireland will either be based in Dublin or Cork. After six to seven years, you won't really reach the mega high salaries that we've seen in the UK or US, but you'll be earning around $75,000 when compared to the cost of living in this area. It's a very, very good salary. 
Now another country in the European Union I want to look at is Germany. Again you'll have a lot of companies based there since it's in the European Union but what differentiates it from the jobs in Ireland say is that the jobs won't only be based in only two cities. Germany has a lot of big cities with companies more spread out across the country. So this provides a lot more flexibility in where you want to work. Salary wise again not as high as a UK or US but slightly higher than Ireland salaries. A starting graduate salary would be in the range of $45,000 and after several increases as you qualify you can expect that to jump up. Your salary around the 7 year mark with decent work experience will be around the $75,000 to $80,000 range. Now the last country in Europe I want to look at is Switzerland. And the salaries in Switzerland are very, very high, higher than Ireland or Germany and actually comparable to the UK and the US. You can expect to be earning around $75,000 when you're starting out and once you have a decent level of work experience you can expect to be earning well over $100,000. This is very comparable to the highest salaries we've looked at so far which are in the US. Now there's a reason for the high salaries in Switzerland and it's got a lot to do with the banking industry which operates there. There's a lot of high profile and high important banking operations that happen in Switzerland and I think everyone in the accounting world knows about Switzerland and how they're involved in that industry and so I'll probably not say too much more about this and like the famous secrecy laws I'll keep quiet and move on to another region in fact let's move away from Europe and start to look at Asia. Now for Asia I'm going to be focusing on two countries to begin with that's Japan and Singapore. So comparing entry level salaries for these two you'll find that 45,000 to 50,000 is the norm in Japan while Singapore has a slightly lower starting salary around 25 to $35,000. However that shifts after qualifying and with 3 to 4 years of experience you can expect your salary in Japan to be around the 75 to 80k mark whereas in Singapore the range is higher where you can expect it to be around 75 and $80,000. Now moving south from Japan and Singapore, let's look at Australia where chartered accountants are in very big demand and the salaries reflect this. So when you begin your career as a chartered accountant in Australia, you can expect your salary to be around $40,000. However, this jumps up again really considerably with a few years of decent work experience under your belt. At this level of your career you'd be expecting a salary around the $80,000 mark similar to some of the countries we've already seen. Now after Australia I'm going to be looking at a group of countries I definitely want to talk about in this video and there's a few of them dotted around the world. Specifically these countries are often known as tax havens. These are countries such as Bermuda, Cayman Islands where tax both income tax and corporation tax are pretty much zero. Now a lot of companies have their operations at least on paper run from these places and importantly they do need a few of their staff based in those countries and this includes accountants. Now there's a whole range of salaries for the jobs on offer here and I'm not necessarily going to go through the figures but I did want to emphasize these group of countries as if you're seriously looking to make big amount of money with least amount of experience as possible then these tax haven countries are probably going to be your best bet to get those high paying jobs. For comparable salaries in these tax haven countries they don't typically ask for 5 to 7 years of experience and you can get a decent paying job for a lot less experience. Now granted there's not going to be thousands and thousands of jobs on these islands and usually there'll only be a few hundred spread out across the tax havens but I just wanted to include them in this video as these are some of the most interesting and very unique places to be working. Now the last country on the list of high paying locations for chartered accountants is the UAE. Now I left this country till the end because there is a point I want to make and I'm not a big fan of this. To begin with the salaries in the UAE are tax free and with a chartered accountant qualification after a few years of experience you can expect to be earning around $65,000 to $80,000 and since these locations are tax free it's probably the highest salary on all the lists that we've looked at so far. However one sad fact is there's a dichotomy in the salaries that are offered. You'll find a big difference in salaries offered between people who come from South Asia so India, Pakistan, Bangladesh versus people who come from countries such as the UK, the US and Canada and so the salary can be as high as what I just mentioned but also can be a lot lower depending on where you're from. Having a chartered accounting qualification is definitely going to be opening a lot of doors for you into high paying finance jobs. However, 
there's a few points to remember when selecting the country you want to work in. The salaries will vary between cities. I've tried to give an average, but the salaries will be quite different if you're working on, say, in a busy city centre compared to, say, a smaller city. And also, salary is important, but location is equally important. For example, a lot of the higher salaries are in those island tax haven countries, but would the high salary be enough for you to move there if there's nothing really going on for you or your family to do on a day-to-day -day basis? And maybe you're liking the salary of Canada. Are you prepared to spend six months of the year in freezing cold weather if you've not grown up in a similar climate? But even if you've qualified as a chartered accountant, there's a lot of other jobs out there that pay really, really well that aren't your typical accounting jobs. If you want to see what these jobs are and how much they pay, I'm going to be linking a video next to me at the end of this video. So make sure you check that out to see what other jobs are out there after you've qualified as a chartered accountant.